Very clear. And we looked at this for several weeks. We've looked at this in our, our preaching. The gospel is the death, the burial, the resurrection, and the ascension of Christ. It is the work that he did to save man's soul from their sin and the penalty of sin. That is the gospel. The gospel is a story. It is a real account. It is something that happened historically, and the gospel is something that is not like a greased pig, okay? We don't have to try to get our hands on what the gospel really is. We know what it is. In fact, the problem is not getting our hands on what the gospel is. It's actually the difficulty we have is obeying it, <laughs> is believing it, is living it out. But this call to downgrade truth to something minute, something that is not that important, to put truth, and whether something is absolute truth, on the same plane as style is dangerous, and I say heretical. Yes, I do believe there are differences in style that are not necessarily right or wrong. But when it comes to the truth of what God says in His Word, there is no discussion on whether this is truth. And there must not be a discussion on whether this is truth. We should have plenty of discussions trying to understand it. Plenty of questions in trying to apply it and obey it and come to the correct interpretation of it. But there is this movement, this emergence toward a wholesale evacuation of what is truth. Running from that and the problem is this emergence is running toward the human mind and understanding to find the answers. The problem is that these people that have asked these questions in what is truth, can we really know truth? Maybe we can't really know it. If they would run to God's word, God would show them truth. But the sad thing is they've ran to Eastern religions. They've ran to unorthodox heretical doctrines and teachings and false religions. And most importantly, they've run to their own minds to determine in this postmodern world, this is my generation, I know my generation. <laughs> we are very much relative. All you have to do is watch TV for 20 minutes to see if man has a relativistic way of thinking. No one's right, no one's wrong. It all depends on your perception. There is no black, there is no white, it's all gray. To this group, we are on a never-ending search for truth. I believe we search for truth, but there's an end. <laughs> it's not never-ending, it's not found in my mind, it's not found in my emotions, it's not found in what I feel to be the best way it should be, it's found in Scripture. That is where it's found. We know that from the Word of God and the Holy Spirit assures our hearts of this at the same time. We are not on a search for the meaning of truth. We are constantly and humbly seeking to understand and apply truth. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You can't get much more definitive than that. That's simple first grade sentences, right? <laughs> I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. In Romans, the Bible says, sanctify them through thy truth. Once again, first grade stuff here. Thy word is truth. It's very clear in the Bible. Regardless of what our postmodern culture professes or desires or thinks and encourages the church to think, we can be assured that unless God is an out-and-out -out liar, we have the truth in Scripture. He says it. In 2 Timothy, 3, 2 Timothy 3, Paul the Aged is giving his protege his final words. This book was probably written around 66 AD. A young preacher and representative of the apostle is faced with the difficult job of keeping the newly formed churches that the apostle Paul helped to plant going in the correct direction. Talk about some big shoes to fill, don't you think? <laughs> Timothy and filling Paul's shoes. We know that Timothy struggled with this. Paul told him to not let anyone despise his youth. Evidently, there was some despising his youth. 
Paul told him to take a little wine for your stomach's sake. Get some, mess, get some wine and put it in there. I believe, if you look at the whole context, Paul, Timothy had some ulcers or something like that because of the stresses of his position and what he was doing. And if you look at the whole context, what he was doing is he had to go, this young man, he had to go and he had to rebuke a bunch of elders and put new ones in their place and give you some ulcers. So Paul says, you need to take care of yourself. You're killing yourself. He has this difficult job, and so the final words of Paul to Timothy is, you continue in the things you have learned. Remembering who you learned them from, verse 14. Be assured of who you know. You know these things because you know who you've learned them from. Timothy, you know that the words that I have spoken to you are the word of God. You know that I'm an apostle and that I have given you something that no one else has except for other apostles. And that is revelation from God. You continue in those things. You firmly believe. You stay steadfast in the things you have learned. And he backs it up and says, because remember, Timothy, from a child... You've known the Holy Scriptures. You know what's really interesting? The original word there, child, brephus, it's always used in the context of infancy. There are several words in the Greek for child, meaning all the way from infant to child to teen to adult. And the one used here is the one speaking of a baby. He's saying, from a baby, you knew the Holy Scriptures. Wait a second, what does that mean? I think that goes back to what we talked about earlier. Chapter 1. His mother, Eunice, she obeyed Deuteronomy, which Deuteronomy said to teach your children the scriptures. But that command was given to the fathers. But we know the father wasn't around. He wasn't around spiritually. He was a Greek, not a believer. But this woman, she did the work of God. And she taught Timothy the sacred letters the sacred writing, the Old Testament scriptures. She taught him, and she taught him. From the moment he could learn, she taught him the scriptures. And Paul says in verse 14, or verse 15, what did those holy scriptures do? Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Now it's interesting, Hebrews chapter 4 says that the gospel was preached to the Jews. In the Old Testament, the gospel was preached. But it says they did not enter into Canaan, the land of rest. It's figurative of rest in Christ. They did not enter into rest. And remember why they did not enter into rest? They did not enter into rest because it was, they, what they were preached was not mixed with faith. So look at verse 15. From a child, you have known the Holy Scriptures. That's talking about the Old Testaments there. It's a word used for Old Testament which are able to make thee wise. It has the power to make you wise unto salvation, but notice this part, through faith in Christ Jesus. You see, Timothy had the academic knowledge of the Old Testament scriptures that his mother was faithful to give him. And mothers, you may not have a husband who's there spiritually. What great encouragement there comes from Eunice. What great encouragement there comes from the reality that she taught him from infancy. And it was able to make him wise unto salvation. When therefore Eunice and Timothy heard of Jesus Christ, they understood, they believed, and it was mixed with faith, and they were saved. And so Timothy mixes with faith in Christ Jesus what he has been taught from an infant. Paul then goes on to tell him all scripture, every scripture. Different word than the one used in verse 15. Verse 15, uh, holy scriptures, hierogrammata, the Old Testament letters. This word, graphe, uh, every scripture, every God-breathed writing. In fact, if you notice, in the, if you have the King James Version, the word is is in there, and it's in italicized. Literally, what this reads is every scripture, every graphe, God breathed and advantageous. <laughs> That's what, literally what it reads there. Every scripture, God breathed and advantageous. That phrase there, given by inspiration. It's one word. Theanoustos. You care what in the world and who cares? <laughs> I'm sorry, I do. Theos means God. Noustos is breath. Every scripture breathed out from God. 